I'm going to show you how to create a database and to receive data from a form that we create as well to that database. We'll be using Microsoft Access. To create an Access database, we open Microsoft Access and double click Blank Database. In the lower right hand corner, let's change the name to Test and click on the folder next to it to change the location and save this test database to our desktop by clicking OK. Now we come back down and click Create. We have an empty database. Let's save our database by clicking Save. We're prompted to name our table. Let's name our table for this example. Example Table and click OK. Now let's add some fields. Let's switch our view by going to the View tab and coming down to Design View. We want to switch our view to the Design View. We want to keep our form small for this example and so we'll only have five fields. Leave the first row for our automatically generated primary key. The second row let's enter first name followed by last name address city and state we can leave the data type as text since that's all we'll be entering in these fields and we can save that and come back to our data sheet view. Now that we've ensured that our data sheet view reflects those updated fields, we are done with our database portion. We can close the database and now we open InfoPath. We need a new form so we click design a form template. We want our template to be based upon the database that we just created and so we click database and OK. Now we select the database that we want to use in the upper right hand corner. We click select database. Now we find our database. We saved ours on our desktop and we named it test. So we click on it and click open. The connection wizard has identified and listed the fields that we can access using this form. We want to include all fields so we leave them checked and click next. We can change the names of our data connections. So let's change the name of this main connection to main test connection just to demonstrate this functionality. Ensure that the enable submit for this connection checkbox is checked because we want to use this form to submit data as well. Now click finish. A blank template opens and now we can design our form. On the right side of the screen click data fields and example table. It shows our fields that we have from our database. Because we want access to create a unique ID for us and for each entry we can leave the ID field blank. Now let's drag these fields over to the middle section. First name, last name, address, city, and state. And now let's tidy up our form a little bit. We don't need this run query button down at the bottom so we can click on it and press delete to delete it from our keyboard. Press delete. We also can delete this bottom section. We want to leave the new record button at the top because it has some pre-programmed functionality that simply provides a new clean form for us. Now let's add a little bit of color to our form. You can play around with it and make some really nice forms but we'll just change the color on this one. We click anywhere in a section that we want to change the field color and simply come to the top and we'll make the field color here blue and in this bottom section we'll make the field color yellow. Uh, let's 
extend the first name field a little bit and also shorten the last name field so that those fields are about the same length. Uh, let's also change the name and create a title for this form. We'll name it student address form. And let's center it. Excellent. Now we need to add a little bit more functionality to our text boxes. We would like to be able to submit this data and so let's create a submit button. We do that by going to the top and clicking insert coming down to more controls and on the right side a panel of standard controls has uh, been displayed. We double click the button and as you can see a button is created for us on our form. We don't want it way up there and so let's bring that button and drag it, simply drag it down to the bottom of our form. Now we want to add functionality in order to submit these items to the database and so let's right click on our button and click button properties. Click the action drop down menu and click submit. This has a pre-programmed functionality in it that will enable us to submit this data to a database. We'll type test submit just to demonstrate the labeling and once we click apply we can see that the button it now reflects what we've added test submit. We also want to change this a little bit more and add a little bit more functionality. We click on our submit options and then go to the advanced section after we submit this data we would like to create a new blank form and so come down and select create a new blank form and click OK and apply and OK. We now can save this form as our test template one to our desktop and as you can see we now have a test database and a test form template and when we fill out and any user fills out data on this test form that data can be submitted to the test database. You're now ready to add these two items to a SharePoint server and begin submitting data.